Hey guys, and welcome back to the Totally Random Talk Show. So, as you probably already know, we're going through the alphabet and going through each and every letter and just kind of throwing out a couple of topics on what we're talking about. So, today we are on the letter Y. So, why don't we just hop right in? Yeah, why don't we? Um, so, our first topic, um, it's just the best. It makes bread rise, and that's all I have to say on yeast not very much <laughs> no, no i'm just kidding i got i got a few things so if you don't know already yeast is what is added into some types of bread or dough to make it rise which gives it very nice flavor and texture and everything like that and yeast is actually alive so yeah how about that <laughs> That's very fancy. Um, so yeah, it has just a bunch of bacteria in it. And essentially, what yeast does is since it's a bacteria, the bacteria um, will eat sugar, essentially. Um, and water. And water. But sugar is the main thing that activates the bacteria. So um, essentially, let's say you have some uh, yeast. I'm, this, this is the only way I can explain it. Uh, let's say you have yeast and you put it in water. Um, chances are it's gonna make, like, if you mix it with, like, flour and stuff that you typically use to make bread, right, the bread is going to rise, just not as much. And that is what they would commonly do back in the day because they didn't have as much sugar. And most of the time they didn't have yeast at all. But, um, if you put sugar in with the yeast and the water, because you need the water to absorb the sugars so that the yeast can absorb that like water sugar compound once you do that it will react to it and then once mixed with the bread itself it will begin to rise because the bacteria is taking in this sugar and it is releasing um i i forgot what they're re releasing but they're releasing a gas Mm -hmm. which is causing the bread to rise, essentially, and have little pockets in it. And so there you go. That's kind of how yeast is supposed to work. So Yeah, without yeast making the bread rise, the bread wouldn't cook the same way, and you'd have not very good bread. It, actually, it really, like, try making bread without yeast, and you'll see it doesn't rise. It becomes hard and doesn't taste as good, so... It's essentially hard tack at that point, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not not very good. Yeah, not I don't know. There's not too much to say about yeast, other than just don't be scared that you're like every time you eat bread, you're eating like bacteria or it's fungi. Fungi technically not bacteria, but like, don't freak out about it. It's it's really not that bad. Every time you eat yogurt which is another Y letter topic, but we didn't pick that one because there are better ones. <laughs> but we could, we, could, we could talk about yogurt right now. Why don't we? Yeah. Um, yogurt is kind of the same thing. It, it's not the same thing as yeast, but what I mean is it has a living thing inside of it. It's bacteria. Very good bacteria for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, probiotics and things like that that are really healthy for your insides and your um, internal organs, right? And especially your stomach because like they uh, basically what probiotics are supposed to do is help you to build up an immunity. So um, the more immunity you have, the less chance you're going to have of getting sick. Or when you do get sick, um, you're going to be able to fight off the bad bacteria really easily. So yogurt is healthy for you. And it's good. There's lots of many flavors of yeah. fruit. And it tastes <laughs> yeah. amazing. <laughs> So there's a lot of, like, living things in our food that we eat today. We like, literally eat living things that have been yeah, exactly. killed. And Next goats. time you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm eating bacteria. Think about what you're eating. Just process that for one moment. If you're eating chicken, everyone eats chicken. Most yeah. everyone. Not everyone. Not everyone, but most everyone. Most everyone. That is a living. That was a living thing, and you're eating it. It still has bacteria in it. There's bacteria in everything. 
But the the thing with food too is that the harmful, harmful oh, sorry, the harmful bacteria and viruses that will get you sick gets cooked off when you cook the meat, which is why we cook meat. Mm-hmm. And so then what's left is naturally you're gonna get some bacteria on it if you know when you put it on a plate and you're waiting to eat. Like before you get your fork and stab the chicken and eat it, <laughs> it's gonna have some bacteria on it it's not enough to make you sick and it's probably not quite as harmful there's bacteria literally everywhere (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i mean like there are other things that you don't cook right so like take lettuce for example you don't cook lettuce typically you'll put it in a salad right (laughs) you could (laughs) cook lettuce fried lettuce (laughs) chips (laughs) (laughs) but uh, essentially like um, typically they have a bunch of bacteria hanging around on them because they're out, like they grow outside, right? And that's why we wash our plants or wash our vegetables in the, our produce, in the, produce in the sink. Yeah. Um, and so even if there are like our trace amounts of bacteria still on it, if there's like small, small amounts of it, you're not going to get like horribly sick from it. Like bacteria is actually good for your body because it helps you to build up an immunity and that's that's really really good for your body so like all the people that try to stay away from sickness they're actually just not really helping themselves because when you're around that bacteria you're building the immunity and when you stay away from it like for example i i literally just got back in school and i got sick because i hadn't been at school for several months and so right once I got there again with like 3,000 students my body was like whoa so much bacteria and I got sick because of it so there's a good example for you see and then for some diseases you could get a vaccine because that's how you get exposed to it without really like getting exposed like you don't want to get Ebola (laughs) but (laughs) that's why you get the vaccine but isn't it isn't it eradicated? E- Ebola? Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Yeah. So. Mostly. Mostly gone. <laughs> Anyways. Y- yeah, that's yeast, I guess. Um, I have a, I really, I, well, are you, do you have anything else you want to say about yeast? No, I'm good. I have a really great transition from this to our next topic. So, just like how you can use yeast to make things rise there's one part of our ec- or economy, I should say, that also is rising in popularity at this moment in time, and that is the yacht industry, which is what we're going to talk about next, or just yachts. <laughs> not, not Yachts. <laughs> not necessarily the industry. I don't want to go into stocks and all that. That's boring. Have you seen the stock price? No. <laughs> no, nah, yachts are cool, but they're so expensive. Why? How do you buy one? They're millions of dollars sometimes. They're kind of insane. But like a lot of people really like to buy them, and I can I can understand why they're cool. Except like I would rather just rent one out. Yes, that's still expensive, but like I don't know, it sounds cool. Back in back in the olden day, I used to go on a like a a website where you could buy yachts, and I'd just look at the yachts and be like, oh, if only, and just kind of like cry. <laughs> that's just sad it was awesome though because like you'd see yachts that fit like 30 or 40 people on it and it's got like two swimming pools and like a helipad and an elevator and you're like oh my gosh so it's just a cruise ship at this point it's a mini cruise ship see yachts are just cruise ships but ones that you can buy (laughs) (laughs) you can buy cruise ships it's just you have to go uh crazy with your money it's a bit of a more difficult thing than buying a yacht i feel like well like two years ago it wouldn't have been very hard because they were selling cruise ships left and right to pay for expenses during covid so like (laughs) who bought them (laughs) carnival sold off half their ships to be scrapped i think you know if i was rich enough to buy a cruise ship i would (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> oh, by the way, um, Carnival is a cruise line, for those of you who don't know. Um, 
That was probably confusing if you didn't know. Yeah, some carnival owned a few cruise ships. They just sold them off. Yeah. For, <laughs> it's just a local carnival, you know. Just, just <laughs> city level. Typical <laughs> local carnival. They have boats. They blew the entire budget on a cruise <laughs> ship line. <laughs> and, and then they had to sell them all. <laughs> no, only half of them. <laughs> no. No, they had to sell them all. Because after they sold half of them, then they blew all the money. Again. Where is your source coming from? From the carnival clown. That's that's a bad source. <laughs> nah, he's the one who owned them. <laughs> nah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyways, I don't know. Well, the, okay. Well, have you ever actually seen a yacht? Like, have you gone to a lake or like, I don't know, some, some like reservoir, and there's been a yacht? I have seen a yacht before, yes. Yeah, so one time we saw this yacht, and it was at Lake Powell, which is, like, in between Utah and Arizona. And it was huge, and there was a slide that went off the side, and some guy went off of it while they were going. (laughs) And he he just kind of got left behind for a second (laughs) until they could get him. (laughs) Why would you do that? I, I don't know. If you're on a yacht, what would you not do? So true. <laughs> and, like, a bunch of these yachts have, like, actual beds and, like, plumbing and electricity. Like, I'm like, it's insane. What? Picture, picture, like, an RV on the water, and that's what they are. And then a cruise ship is just a hotel on the water. Yeah. Just a large yacht. And then an aircraft carrier is an airport on the water. With missiles. And a battleship is a guarded U.S. military fort on the water. Well, it could be any country, but... Yeah. Yeah. For <laughs> us, it is. I mean, if if they don't speak English, then it's going to be a different word. A guarded military fort on the water. But, yeah. It's a fortilla. <laughs> fortilla. There you go. <laughs> that doesn't start with Y. It doesn't. But Yacht does. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about Yachts. They're too expensive. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't, Why do like... Why they have to be so expensive? I can't experience, like, a Yacht or anything. It's not like I have much knowledge about them. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. I, I have a lot I can say about Yachts. Like, um, this kind of goes for any boat, but the fact that they're able to stay up above the water is very, um, it, it, it goes a lot deeper than you'd actually think. There's a lot of math that goes on behind that, and there's a lot of, like, buoyancy and laws that they have to abide by, essentially. Um, if you have a boat, it will not stay afloat just normally. Like, you need some weight at the bottom of it to be able to have it stand or like stay upright and also with that you have to make sure that you don't go over the maximum weight because if it gets too much weight then it's going to sink yeah like think if you think if you have a boat that's pretty small small speed boat that could fit say i don't know 10 people at most Mm -hmm. and you fit 50 people on it it's going to sink yeah like (laughs) because at that point um the weight to water ratio is going to be a lot more per square inch, and you're just going to sink to the bottom. Like, it's not going to be good. <laughs> and then once your boat is sunk, it's pretty difficult to get it back. Yeah, pretty hard. No, you just swim down, pull it up, and Except you're good. Except X-Wings, you can leave it down there for 50 years and pull and it back up. force. <laughs> listen, okay, if you listen to our episode of X-Letter Topics, we mentioned X-Wings. And there are Y wings as well, but they're not quite as good. Yeah, they're still pretty. They're better than they're, Tie Fighters. Tie cool. Fighters lose yeah. against everything, including an actual like wagon, red wagon. Those things no lose wings. against a red <laughs> wagon. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Some kid with his red wagon could be a Tie Fighter. The the uh, Bing Bongs like flying yeah. machine. Who is your friend who copyright? Copyright. <laughs> No one. Play? Ding dong, ding dong. No. There we no. go. We made our own version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't sue, please. 
please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I think. What do you think? Is that most all we have on yachts? Yeah, that's that's everything I've got on well, yachts. I don't know if you have a good way of tying the next one in. Let's see. Let let me like let me think about this for a second here. Um. Hmm. This is gonna be difficult. Let's see what you got. Let's just say I have a really great way to tie this in. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I see where you're going. Uh, this may be a bit of a loophole, of course, but you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. We're talking about yarn. Cats love yarn. I do and too. Understand why? <laughs> because it's a big ball of Fluff. squishiness. <laughs> squishiness. <laughs> The best way to, that's the best way I can describe it. That's fair. But yeah. But what's up with cats though? They either love yarn or they never touch it. They're, or they're like super mean or super nice. Cats are just evil. But if you give a dog yarn, they're gonna like play with it and chew have it. fun and they're gonna chew it. And then they'll probably go do something else. Berserk. <laughs> they'll go berserk. <laughs> they'll swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> That's where hairballs come from. No, not really. Yeah. Dogs don't get hairballs. That's why they're superior. <laughs> Cats just be like, oh, hold up. Ate too much of my own hair. <laughs> <laughs> they're gross. That's nasty. What's that? Yarn. You could make sweaters out of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> typically, when you get an itchy sweater, it's itchy because you got really crappy yarn. So look at the high quality stuff that's made of pure gold. Yeah, you're gonna want the pure gold stuff, the, the like the the fabric that's been like interwoven with silk and embroidered with rubies. <laughs> Very comfortable. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Louis Vuitton be like. But on the inside, it's sandpaper to keep it <laughs> stuck to your nice skin. Nice and nice and chafing. See, so that way, if you're running around, it doesn't fall off. It just yeah. sticks to your skin and rubs it. <laughs> just scratches the skin <laughs> off. You, t- you take off your silky, ruby, embroidered, <laughs> blinged out robe, and you you're bleeding from oh. the, from sandpaper. Your chest is just gone. <laughs> Andy, be like <laughs> from the office. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that would be really sad. One thing with yarn that's really cool is like you'll you'll um a lot of people use yarn for crocheting, right? Um that is one thing that I have always wanted to learn how to do, but I cannot do it because like old ladies are just too good at it. Like too good. they they've been around for like 60 years and they just they they know what they're doing. Like congrats to y'all. I don't know if you know how to crochet, like I commend you for that. That is that is awesome. Please teach me. I can't. <laughs> teach me the ways of magic. <laughs> what is this witchcraft? Like, how do you take literally string and you make it like a hat? How do you how do you do that? You just do it. No wait. <laughs> uh, copyright. Uh, again. You you just decide and go for it. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that's actually a company slogan, you're like, mm. you make a decision and learn and do a thing. That's probably not a slogan. Make an observation, ask a question, <laughs> form a hypothesis, science, do the test <laughs> yeah. or experimentation. Science. Science rules. Science rules. Okay, no, we better be careful here. Yeah. Science, <laughs> radical tastic. Science is radical. Science is cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Too um, cool for school, this guy. One other thing yarn is really good at is being, you know, like drawing, drawing line. You know, if you've got like a board. In a movie that's like for a crime or something, they're like connecting the dots. Oh, yeah. They like put down the yarn and they're like, oh, yeah, this guy, this mob boss, Don, what, Don Cicero? Don Julio. Yeah, <laughs> Don Julio. 
Don Julio and his brother Jimmy, <laughs> they're they're the ones who did this. They're the ones who stole fifteen pounds of ice cream. Keep track of your notes, guys, with yarn. But also, there's probably way easier ways to do that. Yeah. So it's just kind of a movie trope. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Anyways, I'm trying to think of how I can connect this next topic. I don't even know. Oh, I got it. Okay. So, yarn comes in many, many different colors. And just like yarn is many different colors, so is the earth. And specifically, yellow. And this is kind of a stretch, but Yellowstone. (laughs) And, and, And listen, it's not really yellow. It's just the name. But... It works. Say, yarn is magical. You know what else is magical? Okay, well, that could be anything. You could be like, yarn is magical. You know what else is magical? Tacos. Sure, and also dogs. Maybe you can't say that for <laughs> everything, because if you say, yarn is magical. You know what else is magical? Naked mole rats. No one's going to listen to you after that. Yeah, they will. <laughs> no, they won't. They're not magical. They're demons. No, some people like them. They're scary. <laughs> yarn is magical. What do you have against them? They're you just balding. You know what balding, else is magical? Okay? They've just got... <laughs> they just... Lung cancer. <laughs> oh. See? See? You can't use it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yay. I'm we sorry. Love... <laughs> for those of you with lung cancer, we're actually really sorry. Like, it's a hard thing, so... Sincerely. Yeah. <laughs> we won't. Let's let's move on yeah. to something more positive. <laughs> to to tell you guys a little bit more about Yellowstone, um, basically, once upon a time, people traveled to America. And they're like, and wow. In their travels, they found this magical place called Yellowstone. Or well, they named it that. So they, yeah, they named it that because a lot of the stone was yellow because of the sulfur that comes up from the earth. And so, basically, if you don't know what Yellowstone is, it's just a really cool national park where uh, there's a bunch of geysers that shoot hot lava, not lava, sorry, not <laughs> lava, lava, not lava, yeah. <laughs> water, hot water. <laughs> um, a lot of them actually don't shoot water at all. They just, like, kind of bubble and sit there. And, it, and sometimes there's steam. Yeah, steam rises off of them, but it looks really cool. So, if you've never been there, I can definitely guarantee going to see it. But you got you got old faithful, old faithful. We love old faithful. That's that's one of the geysers that actually spews hot water, um, and it's actually timed too. The fact that they can time the exact moment when it's gonna like explode is really cool, just because they can tell when the pressure buildup is too much for it, and it'll just, you know. Yeah. Also in Yellowstone, uh, Yellowstone is in Wyoming, and. Actually, there's a slight little bit of it that is in Idaho. And the crazy thing about that is, like, it's in this weird section where technically you, get, you could get away with murder um, because of lots of complications. Because you're in Idaho, but you're under dur- jurisdiction of Wyoming and the federal government, be- government because it's a national park. So you, like, technically cannot be held accountable for murder there. I just, I wouldn't do that because they, you still will get caught and yeah. <laughs> prosecuted in court for that. <laughs> but just saying, some people have thought about that, and they you should be worried about them. Yeah, they're, they're kind of scary. <laughs> Stay away from them. One other fun thing about Yellowstone is that they have lots of animals, and there are parts where you can be driving through and see lots of animals like bears and bison and stuff like that. Mooses. So. Also, meese. You want to you want to know the difference between a buffalo and a bison? Uh, one of them is a woman. What? <laughs> one of them is a woman. No. Low slash bison. No, they're completely different animals. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So buffalo are. I don't think we actually have buffalo in America. Buffalo are from Europe, and bison are here in America, and they 
are very small in their population, but hmm. they're protected, so that's good. That's interesting. Fun fact for all of you guys out there. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you go to Yellowstone, please do not jump in the geysers. Do not do that. I have a question. Do you think anyone has ever tried to catch some of the water and cook some ramen with it? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay, also, well, well, he's figuring this out. Um, so in Idaho, there's actually a man-made geyser. They basically, we're digging to build like a pool or something like that in the 1800s like or somewhere around there. I don't have it set straight, but anyways, and it something happens which caused a man-made geyser to be created which basically spewed like carb naturally carbonated water. <laughs> and I heard about this. Yeah, and then they made it go on a timer, but at first it was just shooting water straight for like a few days it was bad <laughs> yeah and I'm then sure it was cool though yeah and now it's on a timer and you can drink naturally carbonated water because it mixes with carbon dioxide underneath the earth and carbonates itself yeah okay so this is what google came up with so take all of this with a grain of salt but it says uh the, this person named kala ivor's daughter basically in a geyser field in Iceland, uh, made makeshift bread in an oven that was essentially like a washing machine that she just put in the earth, she basically. Buried it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's pretty awesome. But also, there's this thing from today.com that says three men banned from Yellowstone for cooking chicken in geyser. <laughs> let's go, let's, let's go ahead oh, and find boy. out. We gotta read this in the most serious voice. Okay, ready? The group was found with two whole chickens and a burlap sack in one of the park's scalding hot thermal features. Switch off on paragraphs. Okay. Three men have been temporarily banned from. Oh, wait, just a second. From Yellowstone National Park after being caught attempting to cook a chicken in one of the park's famous geysers. The incident took place on August 7th. According to a spokesperson for the National Park, a ranger received reports of a group hiking with cooking pots towards Shoshone Geyser Basin. When a ranger found the group, it was discovered that the group had two whole chickens in a burlap sack in a hot spring. A cooking pot was also found nearby. <laughs> Three men in the group were charged and pledged guilty to the charges on September 10th. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> also, um, so that we don't get, like, sued... Um, this is from today.com. It is an article from written by Carrie Breen. Breen, November 9th, 2020. So thank you. Yes, thank you, we, Carrie. We don't want to get sued. It's not <laughs> fun. Anyways, so yeah, interesting stuff happens. So people have tried to cook stuff in a geyser. <laughs> the chicken, <laughs> they brought two whole chickens. <laughs> How do they think they could get away with that? I don't and, even know. And also, they, they pleaded guilty, first of all. And second of all, the ranger caught them with two whole chickens. And a cooking pot. And then they, and then they, and they're banned from Yellowstone. What a way to go out. <laughs> with a bang. With a geothermic bang. <laughs> also, um, by the way, not to scare you guys from not going to Yellowstone, but Yellowstone is essentially just um, a giant super volcano that's under the ground. Although that's I, everything. it's not really quite active. Yeah, it's, quite it's as much as people think. It's very, very dormant. It probably will not erupt for thousands of years. Yeah, we're fine. It, it's just interesting fact. Yeah. Yeah. They they've done a lot of studies on it and. Um, like, basically half of the United States would just get completely, like, covered with ash if it ignited or um, erupted. I mean, hmm, tasty. So it's kind of scary, <laughs> but it's, it's not going to happen um, just because it's very, very dormant at the moment. 
So, I think that's everything I have to say on Yellowstone and cooking food in said geysers. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, so, now that you've been slightly bored, maybe, I, I'm, I'm, I'm connecting to the next topic. You see, I, I like it. you may want to ooh, yawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, now I'm actually going to yawn. <laughs> Just get your yawns out, guys. It might take me a minute. Now, I want you guys to take a minute and just think to yourself, are you yawning right now? And if you are, I have a reason for why. And if you're not, don't worry, because uh, that probably just means that you have to actually see a person to yawn. But essentially, they uh, scientists have hypothesized a lot about why we yawn. We still do not know why yawning occurs to this day, but they have come up with a lot of hypothesis, uh, hypotheses, 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 yes. yeah. And they <laughs> have come up with a couple of theories. So here's a here's a good one. Uh, yawn, or yawning will wake up the brain during times when you're bored or tired. That's a good theory because yawning uh like uses the muscles in your like face and your neck, right? Like your jaw and everything to move, which could be uh like a stimulant for uh your what is that? carotid artery where you Yeah, carotid carotid, carotid artery. Carotid. Um know. Basically, it's supposed to just, like, like I was saying, um, increase heart rate and release wake-promoting hormones. Of course, this is a, a theory, so um, they're going into more, like, research on that one. Um, another theory is that yawning helps the brain cool down, um, meaning, like, it could, like, change thermoregulation, which, like, affects the core temperature of the brain. Um Another big thing is, like, contagious yawning. So, like, you know, how people say yawns are contagious. Like, if someone yawns, someone else is going to yawn. Um, they've done studies on that, and they think it's because of what they call the monkey see, monkey do effect, which is essentially if you see someone yawning, you're probably going to do the same because you want to either have a connection to that person or try and be... I don't know, as cool as that person, like, whatever it may be. There are a lot of factors. See, also with that, I think there is another effect that maybe you've noticed before. This is just, this is just my own thought. It's, it's not really, like, set in stone. But when you hear something or you see something, you tend to notice it more. So, which I guess is kind of a, a natural way to react to something. But when, you, when I'm just hearing about yawning I tend to yawn more than I would if I wasn't thinking about it or like you know if you walk down the street and you see a scooter and you see some kid fall off his scooter then maybe you're thinking about that every once in a while throughout the day and then you notice oh an ad for a scooter or something like that and it, you, it catches your attention more than it would have if you haven't but it would still be there so I think that's like an actual kind of effect. Your brain tends to focus on things that you've noticed before and have paid attention to because it thinks that they're important. Yeah. Um, so most of this information I've gotten from uh, sleepfoundation.org, so shout out to Jay Summer for writing that. Again, copyright. We don't, we don't want to get and, sued. And uh, make sure that we cite our sources. Yeah. Um, so it says this, the contagiousness of yawning suggests it may be an empathetic response that helps humans and other mammals communicate. Brain imaging reveals that the parts of the brain associated with empathy and social behavior show a spike in activity when a person watches someone yawn. Therefore, research suggests that the closer someone feels to another person, the more likely they are to yawn when that person yawns. In other words, a person is more likely to yawn after seeing a friend or family member yawn than an acquaintance or a stranger. So, hopefully that, so, that makes sense. So, I have a question for you. Do you know the difference between empathy and sympathy? Yes, yes I do. Empathy is what you feel between two people, right? It's the connection that you have. Empathy is like, 
kind of having an understanding on the same level, right? And like feeling, feeling the love, you know, you could say. Mm-hmm. And and then sympathy is what you feel is more of a one way thing, right? Uh, so you could say like feeling sympathy for I don't know, like the hobo down the street, right? You would feel sympathy for him, not necessarily empathy, unless you like actually knew him. Yeah. At so a personal level. <laughs> So actually, that's interesting because the way I've learned it is that empathy is when you when you haven't well, – so if someone's experienced something, you can feel empathy for them if you haven't experienced what they have. But you – you know, you could oh, – yeah. So you, so, you, so you long for them to feel better so you can help comfort them, but you haven't experienced what they have. But sympathy is when you have experienced a similar thing. So – Maybe if your friend had someone in their family pass away and you have had someone in your family pass away too, you could feel sympathy for them because you've had a similar experience, so you may know how to help them. Mm -hmm. And empathy is easier for people to understand because you may be like, oh yeah, we're here for you, what can we do to help? Because you don't know how to help. With sympathy, when you know how to help, it can come across as kind of harsh because you're like, oh, I'm like... There's nothing I can really do. You kind of have to get through this yourself because that's that's kind of how it works sometimes. Yeah. But but yeah. So uh, this is what Google says. Empathy involves feeling uh, like what someone else is feeling at the moment, and sympathy doesn't involve feeling what someone else. Yeah. Feels. So I think that can go along the lines of both. Like, because with empathy, you're feeling what someone else feels, even if you may have not felt that yourself. With sympathy, you're you kind of you can kind of recognize that oh i've like you you go back to your own feelings in a way i guess what i was saying was kind of just like a very more extensive version of that yeah <laughs> so like like yeah. feeling understanding on a very deep and personal level but then sympathy is when you like see the hobo down the street <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot more complicated now that i think about it i should have just said that <laughs> yeah, so th- that was a little tangent for y'all, but I don't know. I, I think it's interesting, th- the science with behind our our brains, because every single little thing that we do or that we see or mm. whatever in our lives can make a difference. And so I hope you take that to heart when it comes to things that you may want to change in your life. If you set your mind to it, you can do it. Mm-hmm. That's my message I leave with you. I, I was kind of <laughs> hoping that you would yawn. Because I, I yawn. <laughs> no, there we go. There we go. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't a real yawn. Um, but that, uh, I would just yeah. like to share really quick with you guys. Where your focus goes, your energy flows. And studies have also found that if you're focusing on the negative things and the things that you don't want to be, then you tend to gravitate towards those things. But if you are focusing on the things that are positive and things that you want to be, things that you want, and your goals, then you tend to achieve them easier. And so one thing that also helps, that it has been proven to help, is if you write down your goals. If you have a goal, you have anything you want to do in your, in your life, set a specific goal that is measurable and reasonable as well and realistic. And once you have that goal written down on paper, like physically written down, then stick your <laughs> – set your mind to it and, and go for it. Mm-hmm. You can do anything. I think it's a it, – it takes about three weeks for you to, like, kind of get something set in stone and, like, kind of, like, create a habit. So just do it for three weeks and you'll be able to just do it without thinking. Yeah. And, again, it's different for everyone. But if you're trying – Anything, whatever you do, then as long as you're trying, then you can be better and do great things. So I guess I'll leave that with you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Positivity. Yes. I, I got a great idea. Before we leave, we should just like say a bunch of completely random words. Ham. Artichoke. Um, pants, <laughs> pantaloons, copycat, copycat, 
Copycat. 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 Peanut butter. Envelopes. Hamsters. Fight Club. John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Handheld phone. Rotary phone. Telephone. Cellular device. Gramophone. Um. Scissors. <laughs> Skisoros. What? I, I, nah. <laughs> it's not even a word. Nah. I know. You might want to be careful, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what if it's a swear word in Spanish? Hopefully not. That, that, that's the hope. I wouldn't. I don't know any swear words in Spanish. Well, it's a lie, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of anyway. fun little words for you guys to think about in your career. So, yeah. Remember, stay positive. You can do great things. And you can, too. And stay random. Stay random, guys. <laughs>